We have this big emphasis on marriage, how to have a happy marriage, how to have a happy home. Most of it is built on selfishness. Most of it is built on the wrong perspective. For example, the typical marriage seminar. The typical marriage seminar, they tell the husband this, you want to have a happy marriage? Listen to your wife. Want to have a happy marriage? Be kind to your wife, be sensitive to your wife, be gentle with your wife, bring her flowers, take her out for dinner. If you want to really have a happy marriage, meet her what? Her needs. Meet her needs. She's got a lot of needs and you need to meet her needs. And so here's this husband. And he's doing everything he can think of to try to meet her needs. What he's telling her is this. You know what marriage is? Marriage is where you get all your needs met. Marriage is where I knock myself silly trying to meet all your needs all the time. That's what marriage is. That's what she's programmed to believe. Same thing on the flip-flop. They tell the wife, now if you want to really have a happy marriage, meet your husband's needs. I mean, you just begin to play manipulation games. Just to be absolutely clear as we carry on with this video, and I think Jan John MacArthur says it later on, he does not speak against meeting your spouse's needs. He does not speak against many of these good things. But what he speaks against is that is the person's total focus. Total, total focus. That is what they want out of marriage. The first purpose of marriage is to serve the kingdom of God. Having a good business and travel and seeing the world and um, enjoying many of the blessings of God is not a bad thing. But that cannot be your total focus and the reason for being unhappy or happy in marriage. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life cannot dominate how you see marriage or if you are happy or not happy in marriage. Please pause the video and take some time to read these scriptures. This is extremely important information regarding how Christians should see his work on earth and how Jesus looks at a Christian's work on earth. Many people think going to church and small group or cell is the Christian life and the Christian walk. Um, no one will get saved on earth and no work for Christianity will move forward if Christians just, just go to church and just have small group. The world will go to ashes if that is Christians' attitude. We have work to do. Now going to church and small group is good, but that cannot be your whole Christian walk. I'm absolutely shocked when you look at Christianity, as uh, you'll hear later. Um, 20 years ago, I think one in 50 Christian marriages divorced. Oh, sorry, that's actually one in 500 Christian marriages app apparently divorced 20 years ago. One in 500 divorced. Nowadays, it's about the same as the world. This is also shown by hypocritical church-going activities or small group, people going to small group and then living like the world liking what the world likes, having as many boyfriends, being as sexually immoral, uh, alcohol misuse, when they go to the beach or go out, they have just as big cleavages to their dresses or uh, have this as skimpy bikinis, behave just like the world. Obviously, it is very good to go to church and small group, but you have to be different from the world. You have to be a light to the world. We do not conform to the world's traditions and behavior. We change the world.
Now the Christian divorce rate is the same as the world. This shows that Christ Christians are looking at marriage the same as the world is looking at marriage. It is here to, to serve my needs and if it doesn't, I'll get someone else to serve my needs. You are here to serve the kingdom of God. Christianity is not a get out of hell ticket and then you can go and live like the rest of the world. You are a servant of the king. This is extremely important to realize. As I said, many Christians think Christianity is going to a cell and small group and church. You cannot stand before God one day and say, I went to church 3,244 times and small group 4,660 times and that is your work for God. Look at these next scriptures. You must serve in the kingdom of God. If Christians just go to church and small group, the whole world can go to ashes and no one will be saved. People will go to church and small group and drive home and go to church and small group again and drive home over and over. It will not move the kingdom of God forward. Now that is important to go to church and small group. And obviously praying for the world takes place there which is very important. But I think you can see what I mean. Look at these next scriptures on the work required from Christians. Here God speaks to Israel in the Bible. Listen to what he says. I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like a never failing stream. When the church becomes unbiblical and church becomes like a club or like a massive rock concert with thousands of people, that are busy with many unbiblical things. God is not impressed with how big the buildings are, or how big our bands are, or how flashy it is. We have one mandate, and we will be judged in eternity for one thing, how we stick to the eternal gospel word for word. Read again these scriptures and the scriptures I have already given that tell that, this, that the fruitless Christian goes to hell. Now many people will obviously say people in rampant sin are, in, uh, are fruitless. But those people are in rampant sin. Important thing to regard is going to church and small group and marrying and living a life within the world in a pure honest way fruit. I, my contention is that is not fruit. Going to church and small group and living out of sin is not fruit. Serving in the kingdom of God, as it says, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was alone. This is fruit. Does that then mean that Christians that just go to church and just go to small group are not going to inherit the kingdom of God? That is my view. That God will not give eternal life to Christians who just go to church and small group and do nothing else outside and in service of the kingdom of God. You must serve in the kingdom of God. I pray for everyone that hears this, that they seek God and search the scriptures to find the truth in this matter. The most popular book, that same book, has a section called Pillars That Support a Fulfilling Marriage. Security, communication, emotion, romance, touch, and intimacy. The pillars that support a marriage, security, communication, emotion, touch, and intimacy. Those are nice things. It's nice to have security. It's nice to have communication. It's nice to have emotion or romance. It's nice to touch each other. It's nice to have some kind of intimacy. But those things aren't going to keep a marriage together. They aren't going to do it. The same book says the best way we know to bond in a family is by going camping. The best way to bond in a family is by going camping? What does that mean? Pretty shallow stuff. And then the book says if a woman truly wants to have a meaningful con 
a communication with her husband, she must activate the right side of his brain. <laughs> now there it is, lady, in black and white. If, it, if your marriage isn't working, you've got to activate the right side of his brain. We're back to this needs mentality, which is such a counterproductive focus where everybody is concerned about having their needs met. You know the problem with that? If that woman is programmed to believe marriage is where all her needs are met, the truth of the matter is there isn't a man on earth who can meet them all. And so as soon as she finds that they're not getting met, she feels justified in the fact that she's noticed somebody else who might be able to do it better. And divorce is an option. And the same with the guy. If he thinks marriage is supposed to be where all his needs are met, it's obvious that she's not going to meet them all. She's even going to understand them all. Then he's going to be justified in the fact that his needs aren't being met. She is not what I need. You hear them say. And off he goes and justifies another relationship. And it works that way even with the children. You know, they say, well, make sure you're sensitive and listen to your children and give them some space and meet their needs. You can really alienate yourself from everybody in your house by programming them to believe that you are this incessant need meter. How do you keep a marriage together? By focusing on something completely outside those relationships. It's a given that you're married. Somebody said, you know, to me one time, well, I married the wrong woman. My response was, well, she's the right one now. And now that we've got that established, how are we going to make this thing work? But you've got to transcend that relationship. Some relationships are better than others. Some are more fulfilling than others on a human plane. But none of them will be all that God designed them to be unless the people are living outside themselves for a greater cause. And that is particularly true in the spiritual dimension. Divorce is no option for me. Why? Not because my wife meets all my needs all the time. Our marriage doesn't work because I all the time meet all her needs. I don't think she even expects that. I don't expect that. But our marriage works and divorce is no option for us because we have a cause beyond ourselves for which we live. What is that? We live to the glory of God. We live to the exaltation of Jesus Christ. Divorce is not an option. Why? Because we have a testimony before the community in which we live to show them the power of Christ in a home. Divorce is not an option because our home is to be a haven for Christian people to come and to see the work of the Spirit of God. Conflict isn't even an option. Selfishness isn't even an option. Because our home is exposed to so many people, and we want Christ to be seen. So the agenda for us is not make sure I meet all your needs, but the agenda for us is make sure I walk in the Spirit. And I find that if I live to the glory of Christ walking in the Spirit, I have a wonderful marriage and a wonderful family life. It's been a very, very significant curiosity to me that in the same 20 years that the divorce rate in the church has gone from something like 500 to 1 to the same as the divorce rate in the world, in that same time of decline in marriage has been an escalation of material on marriage. The only thing that I can conclude is some of this stuff is putting gasoline on a fire because the focus is wrong. Get outside yourself. That's not popular in the day in which we live. If somebody comes in and says, I have this problem, I have that problem, I have this problem, and our marriages are working out, the first question you might want to ask them is, well, tell me about your spiritual life. Tell me about your spiritual service. Are the two of you walking in the Spirit and are you serving Christ with all your heart? It's been a very, very significant curiosity to me that in the same 20 years that the divorce rate in the church has gone from something like 500 to 1 to the same as the divorce rate in the world in that same time of decline in marriage has been an escalation of material on marriage. The only thing that I can conclude is some of this stuff is putting gasoline on a fire because the focus is wrong. Get outside yourself. That's not popular in the day in which we live. If somebody comes in and says, I have this problem, I have that problem, I have this problem, and our marriages are working out, the first question you might want to ask them is, well, tell me about your spiritual life. Tell me about your spiritual service. 
Are the two of you walking in the Spirit and are you serving Christ with all your heart?